Now, throughout this American Heart Month, we've covered many of the symptoms and solutions for kids and adults <laughs> who suffer from heart disease. Oftentimes, a person's lifestyle contributes to the problem, but for some, genetics play a big role, especially for those with rare heart disease. And Dr. Jacob Shani is the chairman of the Heart and Vascular Institute at Maimonides Medical Center, and he joins us now with more. Doctor, so thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So tomorrow is Rare Disease Day. How does someone know if they might be at risk for rare heart disease? So the first way is just to check with your family. Did anybody in the past, passed away at a very young age, have any kind of peculiar sim symptoms that they weren't aware of? Or actually they knew that somebody had it at a young age. So that's the best way of knowing. Otherwise, you wait for symptoms. And what might some of those symptoms be? So the symptoms are pretty much the same for all kind of heart diseases because at the end of the day it is the same organ. So common symptoms are shortness of breath, uh, chest discomfort, palpitations, or fainting, dizziness, and unfortunately in some more infrequent cases so the first symptoms could be sudden death. Oh my goodness. Um, if you think you or your child may be um, struggling, especially with kids, I feel like it's, it's hard to know. They might not be as communicative. They might say, well, I'm just out of breath because I'm running. Is there anything special to do when you're looking out for your kids? Yeah, so, so uh, it's also important to mention that sometimes the heart condition is part of a bigger syndrome, especially in kids. Somebody is born with a variety of problems and the heart is just one of them. But when it's a primary heart problem, the kid may complain actually that I feel something strange in my chest, uh, something like palpitations, okay? Or the, or the kid just can faint, you know? The exercise, they run up the stairs and they just become very dizzy or, or can faint. So those are the kind of things that kids will complain. But the problem is that kids can adjust. So sometimes a kid who has a problem thinks it's normal. Mm. They don't run as fast as their friends, but they think, yeah. that's okay, that's me. But then, then when you treat them, they realize that actually it's a better normal, so that's yeah. a problem. And what are some of the treatments for these genetic diseases? So the, the most important thing for the genetic disease is to identify them. And we can identify them by certain blood tests and by echocardio echocardiography or electrocardiography. So. Once we identify them, we can treat it. And it depends on manifestation. Some of them would be just with medications, like antiarrhythmic medications. In some less common cases, an implantation of a pacemaker. And uh, sometimes it's just something to control the heartbeat and to slow it down. Yeah. So medications are the most common thing. And what is the future of fighting heart disease? What does that look like right now? Oh, I think it's great, actually, because uh, cardiac therapies are a technology-driven field and uh, technology does advance. So we can identify problems faster with artificial intelligence. We can tailor new treatments, you know, that take advantage of newer technologies. And also the, ph the, <clears throat> the pharmaceutical companies and the biotech companies are coming up with new medications that are tailored to specific diseases. All right, great information. And thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Shani. We really appreciate it. Very useful information. And for additional information, you can go online to mimo.org.